Welcome to the online edition of Night Watch. My name is Bill, coming to you from the Sudicum Planetarium and Adventure Science Center here in Nashville. We have two significant events happening in the sky this month, so let's jump right in. We'll start off with the winter solstice happening this month on December 21st at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. This marks the astronomical beginning of winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. We also mustn't forget it begins summer for those who live south of the equator. Moving on to the moon phases for the month of December, we find last quarter moon will occur on December 7th, new moon when it's invisible on December 14th, first quarter moon on December 21st, and full moon and the last for the year on December 29th. As we move ahead and look at the sky at about 9 p.m. during mid-month, we find up nearly overhead and ever so slightly toward the south, the bright red-orange glow of the red planet Mars continuing to dominate the evening sky and for much of the night. Mars appears as a bright red-orange star-like object, but it is getting a little bit dimmer as we have passed by Mars in our orbit back in October, and as we move away, Mars will get noticeably dimmer over the coming months. To the southeastern part of the sky and to the lower left of where Mars is in the sky, we find the constellation Orion, the famous winter constellation, beginning to rise up and appears as those seven bright stars, two marking Orion's shoulder, three in a row marking his belt, and two more down beneath mark his legs and knees. He is a striking group of stars and will be with us through the rest of the winter season. But now we move on to the biggest event of the month, and that is the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. If you've gone out any clear evening recently and looked toward the southwestern sky, you've probably noticed the bright white glow of the planet Jupiter. And to its upper left, about half as bright and appearing as sort of a yellowish or cream-colored star-like object, we have the planet Saturn. And they have been getting closer and closer together. And they will continue to get closer together until December 21st when the Great Conjunction will occur. Jupiter and Saturn at that point will only be about a tenth of a degree apart, which means they'll be roughly about one-fifth the diameter of the moon in separation. Most people will see both planets together as one star-like object low in the southwestern sky right after sunset. So let's see what's going to happen between these two planets between December 12th and 21st. As we step through the days, we see Jupiter and Saturn getting closer and closer together. On December 21st, they will be low in the southwest, appearing as one star-like object in the sky. Those with very, very good eyesight might be able to see the very tiny separation between these two planets. As we zoom in, we find that both planets will be seen close together through a pair of binoculars, and even through some telescopes with wide-field eyepieces, you'll be able to see the rings of Saturn and some of the satellites of both Saturn and Jupiter, all in one field of view. You might wonder, when was the last time Jupiter and Saturn were this close together? Well, you'll have to go back all the way to July 16th in the year 1623. Jupiter and Saturn were very close together again. However, both planets were close to the glare of the sun, and more than likely, most people on Earth did not even see this event because it happened primarily in the daytime sky. So when was the last time Jupiter and Saturn were very close together and could have been easily observed from the Earth? Well, you have to go back even farther to March 4th in the year 1226. That's quite a long time ago. And when is the next time Jupiter and Saturn will be this close together? They will be again on March 15th 2080 in the early morning sky. So get out and observe this historic event, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Also this month, we have one of the best meteor showers of the year. The annual Geminid meteor shower peaks on the early morning of December 14th. This meteor shower is best seen between about 11 p.m. and just before sunrise. Again, peaking on the morning of the 14th, but you'll be able to see this meteor shower for about two or three days before and after that date. 
The meteor shower emanates from the constellation Gemini, the twins, which is to the upper left of where Orion the Hunter is in the sky. Now this year we have that new moon on the 14th, so there will be no glare or brightening of the skies because of the moon. And if you can get far away from city lights where it's really dark, you might see well over 100 meteors per hour. Again, this is one of the best meteor showers of the year. The Geminids are also notorious for producing fireballs in the sky. Even if you're in a light polluted area, such as a city like Nashville or any other major city or urbanized area, you'll still count probably upwards of 30 to 60 meteors per hour. But to see all the faint ones, you do need to get far away from the city lights where it's very dark. You don't need binoculars, you don't need a telescope, just need a good coat and maybe a lawn chair and sit out and look up and watch the Geminid meteor shower. Don't forget, you're invited to join us here at the Sudicum Planetarium for our planetarium shows, including our new sky show, Exploration Mars. We also have a brand new holiday laser show this year, so check out our schedule at adventuresci.org for more information about all of our programs. And don't forget, if you can't remember everything I've mentioned in this online version of Nightwatch, you can go to our website and download a copy of our current December 2020 star chart, which has more information than I've mentioned here in this report, as well as a star chart that you can take outside to help you identify things in our nighttime sky. Thanks for listening to this online edition of Nightwatch, and hope you can join us here at the Pseudicum Planetarium.